go back to the splash screen and paint over model vertices. So this is basically voxel painting or to be more accurate vertex painting because instead of storing color information on a texture map it's actually being stored on the vertices themselves. Let's see to what go to the mannequin folder choose a head scale it up a bit hit apply and now I can get out of this little proxy or out of the tool by selecting another tool hit the 4 key to get out of wireframe I can uh, go to the paint room now and uh, let's choose ignore back faces. I'm going to uncheck that. Now come over here and what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to paint all the way through. So I'm just going to use one of these selection tools which I can just use the freeform lasso here. I'm going to create a blank layer. I, I could use that but uh, I'd like to create new layers just as you would in Photoshop. So now you can see with ignore back faces it will paint all the way through. Okay. So I can create a new layer just as I would with a, a standard low polygon object uh, imported in. I could work exactly the same way. But you'll see when I zoom in and hit the 4 key, you can see what it's doing is it's applying this color with the vertices. Okay. I'm at 4. I'm going to choose a different skin tone. Um, choose a softer fall off brush and turn on ignore back faces because this time I do not want to paint all the way through. But you can see the performance is very nice. I can um, hit the S key to bring out the symmetry panel or I can access it here. Okay, you can select the different axes. You can turn the plane off, leave symmetry on, but turn the plane off or uh, turn the visibility of the plane off. Okay, and maybe another layer and a little bit of a uh, kind of a redness. can um, use any selection tools as well. Oops. I double tap that and it closed the curve or closed the tool. I don't necessarily want that. Okay, and I'm going to escape to finish. Um, to finish the editing and uh, you can go in and you can right click to sharpen points. I can click on this little toggle here and I have a number of different options. Edit points table and what it'll do is allow me to sharpen just individual points by number as you can see here or I can just do it uh, as I go. I'll right click to sharpen that point and I'll choose B splines so the points are somewhat weighted. Again I'll right click to sharpen that point. You can see it's a much softer curve of B splines. Okay so I may want to sharpen that one. 
I can add another point and so on. Okay, and just hit enter. And apply that color. Okay, based on the amount of fall off that you have as well as the brush alpha. So if you want a really crisp result and choose a sharp brush alpha. You need escape, drop that. Okay. Hit the four key. And you can see this is probably one of the reasons why it's a bit pixelated. I'm going to um, hit the four key, turn it back on. And this time I'm going to crank the border width up a bit. And maybe try this again. Okay, hit the escape key to finish the spline. Sharpen these up. Create another one here. Make that sharp by right clicking on it. Enter. Okay. Now hit escape. Okay. So, what I could do to help reduce that pixelation. Okay, I choose another tool to get out of that um, merge tool. Because the merge, it'll leave the little proxy in place. So, uh, what I can do is increase the resolution. It will resample it. Whoa. Cancel. Make sure I'm on the right layer. Okay, maybe bring the resolution up from about 200,000 to about three times that, three or four times. Hit OK. OK, and if I zoom in, you can see it's a bit more dense. So let's go back to the paint room now. And we'll try it again. I hit the 4 key. And what I'm going to do is use the Erase tool. And erase all this. Okay. And now use my spline tool again. Escape, right click to sharpen, click in uh, along the line here to create a new one. I can also get out of that or delete that point by hovering over and hitting delete on my keyboard. So I'll right click to sharpen that point, right click to sharpen that point, hit enter, and you can see. Now it's much more crisp and le uh, less pixelation. Okay, I hit escape. Choose a different brush. And this time I'm going to hold the shift key. And you can see I can smooth if I need. I'm going to do that. So this time I'll choose a different brush alpha. Now I'll hold the shift key again and right click and drag up and down to increase or decrease the radio, I mean the intensity and um, bring it down a bit. Okay, and if I don't want it quite undo a few times. So if I want it to be very subtle, again I need to bring it down 
be smoothing them out. Okay, and um, yeah. So you get the idea. Um, this doesn't look all that good, but I can change the blending modes. and so on. Crank the opacity down. And again, if I want to, after I've painted, if I want to uh, use all this uh, paint information, I can just export the model out uh, from the voxel sculpting room. And again, all that color information will be stored in the vertices on export. And you can use it that way. Or if you want to retopologize, or if you have uh, a mesh, a low polygon mesh that you used to model what you've brought in, you could just use that in the retopology room, import that in, and it will snap to this voxel object. Okay, And you can now go to the retopo room. Uh, merge to micro vertice, micro vertex, or per pixel painting, and what it'll do is it will send it back into the paint room, but with all that vertex color information baked onto texture maps. Okay, so you have two different options to go in that regard. All right, so let's go back to the splash screen, and so paint directly over a UV model is going to bring you to this splash screen where you can open a file. You can start with basic objects in a paint room and use these as starting points. Uh, you can tile UV. can set the resolution here. Hit OK. Okay, so you can paint the tiles here. X to swap the foreground background colors. All right, and so I'll go back to the splash screen now.